What is your plan? How do you reassure voters? Well, I'll certainly be arrested. Uh, and um, I have made arrangements. Uh, there, I have had, I've appointed a group of uh, 10 to uh, 15 people who will then make all the decisions by consensus, but I haven't announced them. Is the PTI bigger than you? And do you genuinely think it can win without you? No matter how much victimization we face and how much of our top leadership they sort of put in jail or make them renounce being part of the party, but the vote bank is there. And therefore, whenever there are elections, whether I'm in jail or not, the party will sweep the elections. Pakistan, arguably, is run by generals, not politicians. Elected prime ministers have one task that arguably supersedes all others. They've got to keep the army happy. Except you've accused them of murder. I mean, how can that relationship possibly function? Look, well, let's first define what is military. Military is one man, the army chief. It's not some democratic institution. One man takes decisions, in, and that's called the military establishment. So every army chief has his own policies. I work with the military. The thing is, you can't wish the military away because it's been entrenched for 75 years. But you have to have a new working relationship with Pakistan. Is there anything that you accept you would have done differently after the, over the past few months? No, nothing. Because I was always trying to, my doors were open for dialogue. We tried to talk to the, uh, the opposition, I mean, the government uh, party. We had meetings with them and negotiations with them. Again, about elections and the future. Future is elections. This is election year. So how we try to talk to them. We kept coming up this dead end. The dead end is that they, 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 the establishment has decided that whatever happens, Imran Khan cannot come back into power. Because they removed me, they do not want to see me back in power. And in that way, they're dismantling the democracy of this country. In fact, they're playing with the future of this country. Because how do you, how do you have democracy if the party which has 70% popularity, you try and eliminate that? You can only do it by eliminating democracy. In the 1970s, Zulfika Ali Bhutto was very popular, like you, and was ultimately hanged. Do you worry? about your ultimate fate? I don't worry. I mean, I don't worry about whether I live or how long will I live. But all I know is that for 27 years, I have been, you know, uh, fighting this cause for a democratic Pakistan, which can only come through rule of law. Uh, to some, you are a hero. To others, you are a total hypocrite. How would you describe yourself well they have to define it i mean uh, how do they mean i'm a hypocrite i mean you have to make me understand why you locked up so many of your opposition you've been accused of exactly the same behavior that you accused the government of you must concede that you are not impervious to criticism on this front look you, there are a lot of things i've done wrong you know you can criticize me on certain things uh, you know, I think the way I, my relationship with the army chief in the beginning, I was too dependent on him because it was our first time in power. And, uh, you know, and I didn't know how uh, the whole government system worked. There were too many crises when I came into power and I could have done things much better. But one thing, no one can accuse me of political victimization because 95% of all the corruption cases were inherited by me. These corruption cases were made by these two parties who are now together in an alliance. They made these corruption cases against uh, them, each other. And all they wanted to they wanted from me was to give them immunity. This feels like a very destabilizing and cynical era on multiple fronts from all sides. Do you think it is regrettable, you know, that there is just such hostility from every corner. Look, uh, I want to understand 
how am I responsible for this? Here was my government three and a half years dealt with the worst economic crisis, two years of COVID-19. The world acknowledged that Pakistan was the top three countries which dealt with the crisis the best. Last two years, we had the best economic performance of a country in the last 17 years. Our economy grew at, on an average, 6% in the last two years. And then the rug is pulled, out, pulled from under our feet and we are thrown out. And all we have asked since then is free and fair elections. I want to understand how am I responsible for this mess? The, the economy crashed after that. In 14 months, our economy, we have the worst economic indicators in our history. And all they are trying to do is to victimize me so that I don't come into power. In fact, dismantle our democracy. I want to understand how am I responsible for this? You've compared yourself to Nelson Mandela. Do you worry that this is a party entirely built around your personality? Look, I have never compared myself with Nelson Mandela. All I have said is that there are two types of people who come into politics. People like Mandela, people like our great leader, Kaid Azam, people like uh, Gandhi, people who come into politics, you know, for a mission. Then there are people who are career politicians. So I like to think that, you know, I didn't need a career. I mean, I was already the biggest name in the country. I didn't need to come into politics. And no one spends 22 years of his life uh, basically in the wilderness. So therefore, for me, it was always a mission, a movement for justice, rule of law. And I, I repeat, that's what first time I saw in England when I went in as a teenager, because here was military dictatorship at the time. So rule of law and a welfare state. So that's what I've been struggling for. You say you haven't had any kind of backroom negotiations with the military. What about the government? It, there is no point in having negotiations with the government because they're controlled by the, by the army chief. I mean, what he says goes. These parties have nothing. They know that in these elections they'll be wiped out. So they're completely dependent upon the establishment.